uh, What's Good People, uh, Ash, alongside Cass with um, a video, we're going to kind of talk about a subject which is really not kind of embraced as part of the Forex game, but uh, it's definitely uh, vital and valuable in terms of it's something that kind of we all go through. So no point hiding away from it, and it's more something that we need to embrace. And what that is, is literally taking L's, taking losses in this game. No one likes losing. Everyone wants to um, be a winner. Everyone wants to post winners and be in blues. But there is actually times in this game where you might be in periods of drawdowns or something's just not hitting for you at that particular time. And uh, what do you do next? And um, essentially what you do is basically um, take your head on the chin, charge it to the game and move forward in it. And there's different ways which we can do that, um, different tweaks, um, literally just different ways of kind of resonating and getting back into your groove. So yeah, that's something that we kind of wanted to discuss. And yeah, uh, let's kind of get into it. So yeah, Cass is here. I'm going to introduce. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so pretty much, um, just leading on from what Ash was saying, we're just going to pretty much talk about L's and just give you kind of perspectives and options sort of things and like just the kind of ways you maybe should be thinking about some of these things um, because a lot of people just don't know how to kind of think about um, an L sometimes. They kind of just lose and they're kind of stunned. They're like, raw, like I lost. Um, like I wasn't expecting to lose. I thought this whole thing was rosy um, sort of thing and sometimes they kind of lose more than they thought they would and it kind of leaves them in a space where it's kind of like an unknown space and they kind of do unexpected things because it's like, you know, what happens if you put in £200 and you lose 50% of it in a couple of days? Like, you know, like you, like you can start to feel very, very lonely and stuff. So we're just going to give you a kind of a few um, perspectives and a few options in terms of what to do and how you should be thinking about things and hopefully it will be of some value to you guys. Um, so yeah, I'll just hand it back over to you, Ash. Sweet. Um, so yeah, um, essentially what kind of one of the main points is to think about is actually believing in your system isn't it? and um, actually having a system defined. So this can be, you have a setup, you have um, time, so you have the time which you're going to take certain trades and whatnot. And basically when that ha when that system starts to not work, knowing that that's just a temporary um, situation which you're in now, going back through your charts, back testing or whatever, doing your stats, you should know over a certain amount of time where if it's you're taking 10 trades, over 10 trades, if you have a 60% strike rate, that means that six of those trades should win. So if there's a period in that point where only, where it's, let's say you've taken one hit, then you've taken another hit, then you've taken three hits in a row, because of your system, you should know that you're only expecting to take one more hit before a winner should come at a minimum. So when I say believing in your system, that's knowing that whatever is happening now is not a long-term problem. And what happens a lot of the time is, for example, you might have a system where you're trading LPs off the four hour or whatever. And because you started to fuck up, you might then actually just go start doing stuff on the five minute. You might start doing stuff on the 15 minute. And what is actually happening is that you're actually deviating from your system. So you're not doing what you were doing before and what the winners have was occurring from. You're now doing something totally different. So you're going against your stats. You're essentially going against yourself and what you've been trading. So one thing that I would say is when you do start taking L's, know that all the work that you've been putting in previously to get to the point where you are and the confidence that you had a couple of trades ago where you were banging, your tappings were going, you were scoring free kicks and all that juicy, rosy lifestyle that you're living at that period will come back. But you just have to keep going and doing the same thing over and over and over again and not necessarily deviating and trying to find another solution to the problem that you're currently having because if the system that you have is actually profitable then it will do its own thing the maths will play out in due time um, um yeah no i yeah. say i definitely agree with ash yeah. on that one obviously the whole essence of the actual trading game is um three steps forward yeah. and two steps back so you have to actually understand that you know like you're actually meant to go forward some and then kind of give some back before you can go forward some again like it's not an essence of just coming and just purely winning all of the time um like ash said if you look at 
a strike rate, you know, like even if it's a seven out of 10 or a six out of 10 sort of thing, there is going to be the other side where there are going to be losses in there. So it's only natural for you to take your losses when you, when you start to deviate from your trading strategy or from any trading strategy, strategy that you're learning after a couple of losses, what you're actually doing is you're doing yourself a disservice and you're not letting the numbers play out. You're not letting your edge play out over time. Pretty much. Um, you know, there is going to be a large element of play in the numbers here. Like, fair enough, you might end up in a space where you have a higher win rate or a higher strike rate or whatever, but that doesn't necessarily put you into the realm of a trading god who can never lose. Like, you're still going to be very much human in the essence that you're still going to need to do certain things like play the numbers and just let your edge play out over time. Sometimes, um, just because we say six trades out of ten doesn't mean that every... 10 trades you're going to win six sometimes that random sample might stretch out over a large amount of numbers and you might have a, a like a large patch of just straight loser sort of thing and you have to stay mentally fortified um and understand the the um the i guess the essence of your edge that you've been back testing um, that you've been that you've been back testing and, and that you've been using over the last couple of months slash years sort of thing and knowing that it works and just having faith in it and just waiting for um waiting for the market to kind of come back into into flow one thing i do have to say is obviously we can talk about um trending markets and ranging markets and stuff but there are um intangible market conditions so ones that you can't necessarily see so much that's just when price isn't necessarily um moving the most nicest for us and it's not hitting every lp and it's not licking off every hand it's not doing the kind of things that it's meant to you and you can kind of tell and it's like you know what let me sometimes you should just be able to just be like let me just chill off here for a bit um, and wait for price to kind of start moving nice again um so just the whole essence of you know when the iron's hot you iron all your clothes and obviously when the iron's not hot you put that shit down um but yeah just um just understanding that one thing i do want to quickly mark out before i run it back over to you ash is um the whole essence of expectancy so um if we just go into if i just show you this quickly so let's just say that um you win seven out of every 10 trades yeah so that means you would have a 70 percent strike rate and that didn't work that would mean you have a 70 percent strike rate yeah so um let's say that you lost one uh, yeah, lost one, lost one, lost one. Then you won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you won seven, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, basically, what would happen is after after seven, you would have fourteen R, and then you would have lost three R, so you'd be on eleven R. Yeah. So what expectancy means is obviously you know that you're not going to win every trade. Yeah. But over the course of ten trades, you've made eleven R. So um 11r divided by 10 would equal one second let me grab my calculator uh 11r divided by 10 would equal 1.1 i should have just known that but cool that would, that would equal 1.1 r <laughs> so what that would mean is your your expectancy yeah over 10 trades is 1.1 r per trade yeah so this is where you start to like do like a little bit of mental alchemy and you're and you're not letting you're not letting what's happening in the real world kind of get to you and you're understanding that you know the edge in your trades yeah and the edge in your system and from the way that you trade and stuff after 10 trades you should be making about 1.1 r a trade so if you lose this trade you're not necessarily letting that bug you out um or put you in a space where you're trying to do all this crazy different stuff and even if you win like the next three trades and you make four or three or, or two or whatever you're not less you're not letting that kind of um take you away with the fairy sort of thing you like when you understand your stats truly you understand how much it is you make over time so it just allows you to be to be a lot more balanced sort of thing but yeah ash i'm done waffling mate go on yeah and it really goes um into treating this like a business isn't it as has been mentioned in that other literally. job, but it really is a business, isn't it? It really is something that's here for long term. It's not a short term thing where you've been slapped up for four weeks and then now it's time to quit kind of thing. Like it's really a long term process and letting um it play out. And another thing which um is very, very serious, but how many of us actually really do it is journaling. Mm -hmm. So like 
you've taken a trade, this has happened, how you were thinking, what you were feeling, the outcome, all those kind of things. This you should really be having some sort of document where you're, you've actually got a list of all the trades that you've taken over a set amount of period and basically what you saw before, what you saw after, and then you can actually analyze and notice that if there's any deviations in what you're kind of doing and how you're feeling from the market. Because really, this should be like a robotic thing. Obviously, we are humans. We do get vexed. We do do certain stuff, but really, you want to keep it as systematic as possible. And yeah, it, it goes into the thing that even when you are taking L, literally wax on, wax off, go back to the mountain, give yourself that confidence again before you actually want to step back into the field. Like, it's not every single time that we should be trying to jump and revenge trade and get the money that we lost. Like, we should really be able to separate the emotion and the monetary value from the process of what we're doing. 100%. Um, yeah, definitely. I think with the whole journaling thing, like, everyone has to accept that, you know, like they feel different at different times. So no matter how much you want to say that you are in control of yourself, um, you are very much in flux and always fluctuating sort of thing. So it's good to be able to kind of um, give yourself like a feedback loop um, just so you can see where you can improve on different things, just so you can see like the running things and the consistent things that happen to you when certain things happen. So you should definitely be journaling, um, you know, see how you trade when you when you feel great, when you don't feel so great. Um, see how you trade in the morning, see how, like, 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 see what the running theme is for your wins sort of thing, just so you can work on your strength or see what the running theme is for your losses so that you can, um, you know, engineer some stuff off the back of the fact that um, you keep losing doing a certain thing. Like, you know, um, a lot of people usually don't realise the fact that if they keep losing doing a certain thing, then they should be smart enough to turn around and be like, aha, this must be a setup, but I'm just on the wrong side of it sort of thing. So let me... Let me, you know, turn the shit around, reverse it or whatever and, and, and see what I can um, um, work with or do here. But these these sorts of things and um, realisations and stuff are the sorts of stuff that you can only come to once you study yourself, yeah? And once you um, try and give yourself feedback sort of thing. If you're not writing things down um, and clocking your common themes, then there's, then there's no way for you to kind of realise any of this stuff um and you know like it all kind of leads down the whole road of starting to do stats and starting to understand numbers like this um and then when you do understand numbers like this like it helps you to just generally be a lot more calmer and you're, and you're a lot less anxious about getting every trade right um and and you're and you're a lot less likely to fall into a space where one trade just knocks you off your balance and now suddenly you you you, you feel like you're a shit trader like you like you know it's okay to lean on the numbers from time to time sort of thing. So, yeah, that would be my two cents on that one. Mm. Uh, another thing as well is, um, obviously, this game, there's bare variables. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just quickly jump in. Sorry, you said going back to the mountains, yeah? So, cool. One thing, yeah, that I'll be very real about, yeah, obviously, one thing that I found within my um, own trade, and especially when I was first coming up sort of thing, I've, I've, I've managed to curb it a lot these days, is when I was... Like the more time I would spend on socials, yeah, and not so not so much for research, but the more time I'll spend on socials, like posting charts or talking shit or whatever the bloody heck it was I was doing, sort of thing, yeah. What would usually happen would be my trading would dip after a couple of weeks, sort of thing, yeah. And then when my trading dipped, I would then quote unquote go to the mountains and like you know like kind of shut everyone out and do what um do whatever it is that I needed to do to kind of get back into that space, focus, get back into flow and stuff, and then. And then suddenly I'll start hitting it again, like boom, like man's man's catching flies with fucking chopstick from doing all of this kind of mad stuff, um, sort of thing. And then obviously when I started hitting it again, obviously you naturally start feeling good again, like you want to let let the people know what's good, sort of thing. You start flinging up charts, you start getting involved in the mix, um, and you just generally start to lose focus. So what happens is focus goes from internal to external, sort of thing. And then when that happens, after a couple of weeks again, you know. Um, start to maybe take a couple L's, um, a couple hits start to blindside, and then and then I'll realize that you know the skills kind of gone off simply because the concentration's gone. So, um, 
long story short going to the mountains is my favorite thing um these days i've learned to kind of stay up there more so um and not lose that focus um so just always always um bring yourself back to focus on the internal rather than the external sort of thing and um, there's a lot of people who can testify to what i'm talking about now people like abu um, and a couple of other people do a lot better when you know they just kind of shut everyone out and just do their thing on their own as opposed to like trying to be part of some big circus sort of thing so yeah cool yeah definitely being in being in the environment where you excel is even more important in terms of kind of a, from a mental aspect rather than because actually like you said that's what comes first in it it's from internal to external of course. but um, yeah like this game is so it's crazy because there's even that like, there's different types or you can take in this game like obviously the fundamental outcome is that you probably lost money but there's ways that that can happen that for example you could be up in the trade and then you end up taking it out or you end up going break even when your account was looking all nice and then you kind of took your eye off the ball and news came out or this happened and then now you're just looking at a blank screen and just minus kind of thing is stuff like like you say people being on socials and maybe someone who you respect is calling this and because you give them that um, level of status and respect in kind of your own trading journey you might follow what they're doing and then they get stopped and you get stopped and then you're just angry at yourself because you're thinking why did i do that like mm -hmm. kind of thing like you like that's happened to me in the past kind of thing like seeing people who were making certain calls and yes because you rate them you go along with what they're saying and then you're the one that's taking the L in it. Like, you might even say something like, oh, I didn't do it because I didn't see what happened. Like, well, you're the one that pressed buy and sell, and you're the one that's now taking it. Like, yeah. Even um, ones where you, you might even respect them so much, you might even over leverage kind of thing. Yeah, and, no, of course. I hear you know, that. Accounts got lick up. Yeah. And even over leveraging, like, yes, we know that we should all have our strategy, whether it's taken. Um, two percent per trade or whatever, but you over leverage or you do something nuts, and then now there's just one fat hole in your account, and then that's a different type of L kind of thing. Like even me again, like in the past, I've taken a crazy L in the past, and it just made me feel sick. And at that point, I knew that I couldn't trade yet, kind of thing. Like I knew anything I was doing was just not. I wasn't in the right time frame to go and step back into the battlefield. Like I literally just would have been shooting, shooting blanks kind of thing. Like I really had to go back into the mountains and look at what my process was and why I messed up kind of thing. Why did I over leverage? Why did I feel like this was the right time to do what I'd done? And then after that kind of, I was able to kind of then come back out and not necessarily hitting it straight away but at least getting into some sort of flow where I realised like cool like what I'd done was just a mishap and that's not actually the process and what I'm trying to do so once I was able to kind of get my confidence back then uh, as much as you're still wounded from that L like it's something that you kind of just know that that happened for a reason kind of thing like you needed to learn that about yourself so that you can progress yeah, to the next level. 100 um I would say, like, obviously, just off the back of everything you were saying, obviously, like, everyone needs to remember, obviously, as much as we kind of all gather here to learn together and we kind of help each other and bounce off each other, whether it's us or other quote-unquote, quote-unquote mentors you have online, whether they know that they are mentor or not, um, everyone needs to not forget that this is a one-man sport, in it. So at the end of the day, it's you versus the market, a.k.a. you versus you, in it. So don't get carried away in letting other people's buyers kind of overrun you sort of thing. You do have to believe in yourself. Um, and then obviously this leads us into just mentality. So you have to, um, like, you can't have a victim mentality in it. You have to take um, um, responsibility for all of your actions in it, whether that's, whether that's, you, whether that's someone that you rated um, made a call and then you felt like, you know what, let me just over leverage this whole thing whether that's his call or or your call and you end up losing or whatever it is yeah you need to bring yourself out of this whole mentality of blaming anything apart from yourself from losing um, so not from 
for losing or for winning sort of thing. It's like you can't only claim things when you win, but when you lose, you're like, ah, oh, market done this or price done that or, um, or ah, oh, man, they moved it during Asia or da 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 da. Like, like literally every single thing that happens in this market, whether that's a win or a loss, is on you sort of thing. And, and it's not just in the market, it's in life. So the earlier and the more that you can accept that, yeah, then the more strides you can make um, out here when it comes to um, bouncing back from losses. Um, and and um, like Ash said, obviously learning that every single failure, yeah, um, has has the seed for, you know, like growth or whatever it is sort of thing. Like obviously some people can, can kind of take losses, let it rip them apart and then they kind of quit and move on in life. Whereas the next person will take the loss, still get ripped apart and stuff, but they will learn from the actual situation. They'll learn what it is they've done wrong what it is they can do better next time and then obviously they'll use that experience to be better next time you've got to think about all of the guys that you've come into trading um and then you've seen them whacking it and it and 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 it seems almost magical level sort of thing and it seems almost so easy for them um and you know they smile at you and they're like yeah like you know like, like it seems easy but bro like you were not here like 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 i'm just meeting you now you you were not you were not there for all of those dark nights of my soul sort of thing where it was just peak so, um, you know, like, it's really on you and it, what you choose to do with your L's is the main thing here. And, and this is, um, it, like, it might seem just in, in passing and very passive and stuff. Like, this is a very, very major key in it. Like, what you do with your L's literally defines you in this game. And, yeah, like, you're, like, I'm not saying your L's won't be painful. Everyone has to lose considerable amounts of money. It's called paying your dues. You get it sort of thing. But what you do with the L... And the pain and all of that stuff, you know, like you know, um, where you put it, like, do you transmute it? Do you do you use it to fuel yourself, or do you just curl up in a ball? All that kind of stuff, like, what you do with it, is going to be the main difference here, isn't it? So just really meditate on that, find some time to do that. But yeah, go on, Ash. And it's all relative to you, isn't it? Kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. don't look at someone else's trade and account size or their wins versus their losses or whatever, because like we say, like we're all at different parts in our journey. Some people might have started with this amount of account and it's now this size or whatever. So when you see certain people that might be losing like tens of thousands or whatever like that, that's not something for you to kind of um, delve into because you don't know what people's account size is. You don't know. All you know is what your account is kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Unless mm -hmm. obviously you've been discussing with other people, but really and truly you're an account manager of your own account. You're... Um, kind of your own psychology is what you'll be managing kind of thing so yeah don't let other people kind of get into your brain and all them kind of things because really and truly like I said it's a, it's a one man game kind of thing um, and um, I think on the flip side of, on the flip side of that is um, don't kind of jump on socials and kind of look at other people um, quote unquote doing well or only showing you their good trades and, and whatnot and, and start to compare compare your whole trading career to their highlight reel because these are the things that are just a one track road into like into psychology that you don't need to be dealing with sort of thing you just need to understand once again this is a one man sport so you just focus on yourself you literally face the front and just focus on making you better when it comes to looking at people online um, um I think Michael said it well um, in his video, but he was like, literally just um, take what you can from them in terms of technique sort of thing, or in terms of, in terms of what, what whatever value it is they put forward. Um, try not to concern yourself too much with whether they're doing well or not doing so well sort of thing. Like, you know, when you, when you see value, like, you know what it is, you know how to spot it sort of thing. So just take it with a pinch of salt and keep it moving sort of thing. But this yeah. whole thing is about protecting your, your whole like your mental arena and your psyche and stuff you don't let anything into that whole kind of area and it goes alongside as well like different types of l's but also like when you you've taken your l so like it's it's a lot different taking an l like on a monday and a tuesday and knowing that you've got wednesday thursday friday to kind of make a difference or bring yourself back to a break even or you just kind of got time in that short term moment to kind of make a difference rather than you know, let's say on a Thursday or Friday, you know, the week's coming to an end and you do something stupid and then you're just down and then you've got Friday, Saturday and Sunday to kind of just be in your feelings and all that stuff. Like 
Yeah, that, yeah, that one is kind of rough because obviously, like, especially when you kind of do it on a Thursday or Friday, because like all you want to do is just just shoot again, like you're ready to hit anything, and it's like you know, in deep in your heart, you have to actually wait till next Tuesday now for some shit mm-hmm. to, to set up. But um, even with that said, the flip side of that is, you know, if you do find yourself up on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, like considerably up, and things are going good, like you need to think forward and start thinking about the fact that you know what I've done well here. Let me start risking change, or let me start. Then we start making sure there's a certain amount of this that I'm not giving back to the market. Um, you just have to be a little bit wise about it. Um, um, a lot of people joke and laugh about Dunford a week on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and stuff. But you know, when when you do get older and you uh, and, and this whole thing is kind of full time. If you're 34 and the kids are coming home from school and stuff, you don't really want to be in the market till three, four yeah. um, every day. Like you really do want to be done for the week on a Tuesday so you can go and live your life. So got to think about you know like just just how it is you're managing your business this whole thing is a business trading business you get it so the worst thing is kind of like <laughs> reading that bill on a friday and you're down let's say i don't know 500 pound and then friday sunday comes and you gotta do food shopping or... you gotta do, you gotta do. <laughs> and then, and then and it's like it's it's like suddenly that saturday or sunday is when you need to make a 500 pound payment somewhere and it's like bruh like I really had that, so um, so yeah. Like once again, just protecting your psyche in it. Like if you want to have a good weekend, yeah, don't do anything stupid on a Thursday or Friday, in it. Pretty much. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, what was the next point in there, Ash? I'm gonna talk about quickly going back to like also that like blowing account in terms of kind of like rock bottom feeling in it. So obviously, when you've kind of still got funds to trade with and stuff, it's kind of like we said, you can still kind of get going and, okay, cool, next week we move, whatever it is, but that feeling of, like, when you've actually maybe, let's say, blown an account because of all the other things that you've been doing over the previous days or weeks, like, when you actually see 0.00 or not enough funds to trade kind of thing, like, that's, that's like, say, like our rock bottom, but then from rock bottom, there's only one way up kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, kind of what we do next in that situation. Um yeah, no, you're right. Um um I think obviously because I'm always talking about like the subconscious and trauma and repetition symbols with this kind of shit. Like when you do when you see zero 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 or like zero zero and fourteen pence, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a really big symbol to your subconscious that you are fucked it here. But um but obviously like I'll like I'll be real in it, like everyone has to hit those rock bottom like rock, rock, rock bottom moments you do have to blow um a few accounts to understand the essence of what it is you're doing here and it when you're moving crazy you're literally wasting your bullets um, and i think it hits home the most when you know it's usually when you've just blown your account that you know the next day or the next week is the most cleanest price action you've ever seen yeah. in your life and you, all, all you can do is trade demo you know what i mean um I, like um, it, it really hits you and then you start to understand the essence of the trading game which is you're meant to you're meant to protect your capital a lot of people kind of do this whole thing about um openly being able to admit that they were just bored so they just done something or that like like that like, like they will openly say oh because nothing had happened by wednesday i felt like i should be trading so i just done this and it's like what you need to understand is you're not meant to just fling capital out like 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 you're not just spreading your capital like a manner sort of thing it's not that's not how it is what you're meant to do is you're meant to protect it so that when the time comes that it is nice and clean to to do some shit you have something to do some shit with sort of thing um but obviously like it kind of takes bowing an account to understand that you know i don't want to take them shit trades anymore i don't want to take them them non-confirmation trades i don't want to be a cowboy i don't want to trade lower time frame like all, all this kind of different stuff sort of thing it does um like you know those who don't hear must feel that's one of the biggest axioms that we talk about in this whole thing over the last couple of years those who don't hear must feel it's very natural it's a it's a fractal of life <laughs> so um so you know like but blowing accounts is is hard um but like we said in it, it all it like it's very cliche but a lot of this game is about like what you do after the matting happens in it like that's the, like, that's where your character is built that's where we separate the mice from the men the, uh, a lot of people that do become consistent in this thing um, and a lot of people that you look up to yeah i'll be real i've been i've been around long enough to be able to see the trend and pattern and at first it was like there was no trend and pattern but then i realized it's not the smartest or the quickest or the whatever it's usually just the person who sticks around yeah sort of thing it's just usually the person who can stick around for long enough to 
somehow stumble upon some techers or somehow stumble upon this or stumble upon that. They kind of just fall into a groove or whatever it is, but is that like a big foundational part of it is just sticking around, aka being able to just weather some shit sort of thing. And then obviously from that point forward is when they can usually build into their legendary status or whatever it is. But um, you know, everyone you, everyone's gonna blow an account. Like you like like you have to, you know, you have to feel the sting of the fire to know I don't wanna do that shit anymore. So mm. and you, you you just can't give up. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Really, really and truly, you just can't give up. Like, it's a long game. It's it's gonna be painful. It's gonna, it's gonna be nice. Like, it's a roller coaster. Like, one day you could be down in the down in the dirt, then the next you can be feeling like God, kind of thing. Like, yeah. just bare dazzling, like on Mario Kart when you've hit the star and everything just rainbow. Um, um, yeah, and I mean with that, like even that, like you have to balance that out. Like when you this the trading game is one of the things that kind of helps you to understand polarity of life and at one moment you feel like shit next moment you feel like quote unquote a god so when you can understand that this is the kind of things they play on is why you have to be balanced and everyone always everyone's always talking about just being balanced and not letting a win get to your head or letting a loss get to your head because what mm. you're meant to do is just maintain that level middle ground because all they want to do to you is have you at opposite ends of the polarization sort of thing either really scared or really greedy that's the whole essence of it if you can maintain the middle ground you can be objective and not let all of that get to you sort of thing. So it's a lot easier for you to to just do your thing and to do things objectively and clinically and execute your trades and all this different stuff because you're operating off expectancy rather than how you feel in that moment and that kind of stuff. Um, um, so yeah, like it's just a lot of, there's a lot of um, understanding yourself sort of thing. So one thing I did want to say is like in all the times that I spent blowing accounts or any time that I do lose money, it's going to be off. Like everyone has this thing where when they come into trading, there's a whole bunch of rules set in front of you, but they all look boring. So stuff like, you know, you have to look at a higher time frame. Yeah, they all look boring as fuck. So everyone thinks, oh, you know what? I'm going to do 70% of this shit or 50% of it. And then I'm just going to try and get away with some other stuff. Everyone has that part of them. It's natural, we're all humans. And any time we'll lose money or blow account is because you like you try to you try to Ray Charles one rule, you try to blindside it and you thought you could skip the, skip the queue pretty much is what you tried to do and you thought you'd be lucky this time and unfortunately it doesn't work and then you usually end up in the dumps and then when you've lost your shit yeah and you're thinking about where it went wrong you understand that it was all your fault yeah so you, you, don't, you don't play victim yeah you know where you went wrong and you'd be like okay cool next time i'm just not going to do that a lot of blowing accounts and losing money it is literally you shedding your lower nature sort of thing just you shedding like just this just the stubborn stuff that you that you don't want to stop doing until the market kind of bangs it out of you yeah for real <laughs> felt that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's um, what it is isn't it well yeah um cool i would just say on the final point the l's will come embrace the l's and yeah the hustle really is so separate Mm. Um, I think just prior to closing it out, we'll just quickly um, run over different types of L's or some of the things that can come, just some of the situations where, you know, L's will naturally come if you don't kind of pay attention to it. So we'll just give you a couple of scenarios just so you know you don't feel alone when this shit does happen. Um, so we have over leveraging, which is everyone's devil. Everyone has that thing that they have to cage. Um, um, you know, everyone, literally, everyone has this demon called over-leveraging that they have to cage. Everyone in the back of their head, no matter how disciplined they think they are, has this part of them that wants to be rich overnight sort of thing. And it's, you know, when you, with the whole leveraging thing, you, what you're meant to do is keep it caged. Um, if you decide to unleash it and let it do a mad thing one day and it bites, you, uh, um, um, uh, and it bites you in the ass, then you know whose fault that is. Once again, when we're not going to play victim, we're going to take responsibility for everything. But there's that... There's not trading your plan, which is once again just a lack of discipline, um, marrying biases, which is going to be like a cognitive thing, um, revenge trading, not being in sync, which comes back to maybe not looking at the higher time frame at all. Um, life clouding your judgment, which is actually a pretty real thing. Um, Ash, do you want to touch on this bit quickly? Yeah, like obviously we'll all have family, we'll have friends, we'll have. I don't know, different things in life where we're at, whether that's being in education or um, working, whatever it is. Like there are going to be times when 
like life can just like knock you off mm-hmm. and kind of it's okay to kind of take time out or descale or focus on something just until kind of you get that clarity because like there's been people that I've been speaking to have where maybe I don't know let's say um, them and their partner are kind of going for a rough time and due to the fact that they're always I don't know arguing or, or this is happening like they're just not at their trading best so they just kind of do silly stuff or another example could be I don't know um like real life stuff like you've got a bill that's due like I don't know you run up your <laughs> phone bill or um let's say you've got bare parking tickets kind of stuff so obviously you know that trading is a system where you can make money and because of knowing or wanting that quick fix you might let's say over leverage trying to do this and do that and then you end up taking a L and really and truly it's not only did you come away from your system but you really try to force something onto the markets, which happened because of something that happened outside of trading. And yeah, just basically on that, you just want to um, separate that and not intertwine your emotions or any other thing that which can happen. And basically just knowing when you're at your best and when you're not. Um, yeah, I think just um, around that, obviously trading is a very mental game if you haven't noticed already. Um, so pretty much, um, you know, if you are just aren't in the greatest uh, mental state, if you're tired or if you're angry about some shit or whatever it is, like it all just does spill over. Um, you do really need a clear mind to kind of hit this whole thing up. Um, um, so you just want to always kind of just be conscious of just just how you are in general you know if you are having a tough couple weeks there's nothing wrong with taking a step back just so you can know that when you are doing this thing when you're trading you're doing it at, at, at your optimum level it's like playing football if you play for a, if you play for a big club sort of thing and you had a big match coming on the weekend Champions League final or whatever like you're going to want to be in the optimum like you don't want to be arguing with your babes when it comes to the Champions League final you'll tell the babes like you're actually messing with my feng shui right now so it's very much it's very much similar when it comes to this whole trading thing there's no difference um just understanding the importance of your mental space sort of thing um and then where would you go and so forcing trades in general we know about that forcing um reversals is a big thing so you know is we're not always turning around the market's not always flipping around um it, it is continuing it is continuing a lot of the time so that these these are the things kind of things that can cause um losses um copying others a very big one you know just not believing in your source in general it's been a lot of people who have joined offshore feeling like they might just get clean signals and stuff and then they've kind of been hit with the reality that they're gonna have to learn how to do this thing themselves not to say that they weren't um down to actually learn sort of thing but it's like you know this is the this is this is what we push because you know you can't copy other people because what what's gonna happen when you need 100 bags and that person's not around you get it sort of thing like it's just not going to work um but you know even with me saying that like ash was saying um having monetary pressures is probably one of the worst things that you can have when it comes to trying to trade yeah everyone goes through this little period where they feel like okay they have a couple problems outside of trading they feel like yeah i'm just gonna quickly make some hair and do this and do that and what they find is the paradoxical world of their trading actually becomes shit up because they need money sort of thing but when they don't need anything things seem to just be flowing out of their hands Midas touch and shit so what you'll find is you know like um, you're going to want to keep as much monetary pressure off your trading as possible sort of thing um, even when you are full-time you're going to want other avenues of money just so you can trade from a, a pure a space of the, 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 the least pressure as possible detached clinical all that kind of stuff um what else do we have on here not understanding the bigger picture which is once again not looking at a higher time frame um, lacking confidence so there's people who are on the other side of this stuff who who actually take a different sort of L yeah so not taking the risk is also a risk so if you're seeing setups and you're not taking them yeah and price is just leaving you and leaving you and leaving you and going and going and going and you're missing out on 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 tens of R and hundreds of R sort of thing um, then that is also a different sort of L sort of thing so lacking confidence in your own source and what you're seeing um you know is is also a big problem um so it's something that needs to be kind of addressed by people in general ash do you have anything to say on that one not taking the risk is a risk i think that speaks for itself yeah there you go 
of taking a risk is also a risk. Um, and then, yeah, we've, we've already kind of touched on um, blowing accounts and stuff. But, yeah. So, just in general, like, hopefully this video would have helped you to kind of understand that, you know, a lot of a lot of just taking L's and blowing accounts and just losses in general is going to come down to perspective and how you see things. And that's not just with losses, that's with everything in life. It's going to come down to how you see things and what you tell yourself about these things. Losses are natural, yeah. The essence of the trading game is three steps forward, two steps back. If you notice, and even in that one movement, we still got one eye on the end sort of thing. Yeah, you're here to make money. You're not here to slap your top bins sort of thing. So you need to understand these things. You know, start to look at some of these um, models for like R's um, and numbers and stuff so that you can start to actually trust the numbers and um, um, as much as you trust your back testing um, and you trust your edge. It just it just allows you to trade more freely and from a less like hesitant place sort of thing. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was of great value to you guys. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you know where to find us, um, rate the vid. Um, let us know what you think. Ash, do you have anything you want to round up with? Yeah, let's get it, man. Let's let's be the best that we can be. And obviously, like like I like I said, always shout us if you are actually going through any periods where you kind of are down the dumps where like sometimes we just gotta put our pride into anything, you know what? Like yeah, like I need to kind of I need help in it or I need a way to kind of get back to that yen period where I was, then yeah, like this this is what the mountains are are for in it, like maintaining a high level. Yeah man. Um yeah, cool. So just don't forget what I said about like focus on internals um rather than externals. Like the whole mountain life thing, as much as it may seem like a bit of a novelty now, it's really not a novelty. It's a real thing. This is where people do do the most damage from sort of thing. So take that in um and i can't believe i spelled expectancy wrong for most of this video but it's okay no worries <laughs> um but yeah cool say that and we'll see you guys in the office um and enjoy the rest of your weekend oh.